So those are definitely turbulent times here in this country and all around the world. It, but those are also very interesting times in the area of artificial intelligence. It, my name is Hadas Bitran. I am the health AI um, R&D manager at Microsoft Health and Life Sciences. Um, I have a R&D teams. I, I'm, I'm located here, by the way. Uh, I have R&D teams all around the world that are building health AI uh, products, software, algorithms, etc. And I want to talk to you about what the future of healthcare looks like um, in the era of generative AI. So let's start with what is generative AI. Generative AI is a form of artificial intelligence that can generate content without seeing that content before, generating text, images, um, sounds, videos. I want to convince you that if we learn how to use this generative AI technology in a responsible way, it has a potential to make a tremendous impact on the healthcare industry and help alleviate some of the most burning problems of um, the healthcare industry today. Um, it's not a magic bullet, uh, and I will talk a lot about what responsibly means. So research has recently shown that ChatGPT has passed the USMLE the um, licensing exams in the United States, the medical licensing exams. Does that mean that ChatGPT can now replace doctors? My answer to that is no, um, but it can help with some of healthcare's some most urgent problems if we put it to use in a good way. Let's look at one example, one problem, a big problem worldwide uh, where a chat GPT or generative AI like technology could help. So let's look at uh, burnout. Clinicians spend a, something between a third and half of their time um, on clinical documentation. Um, this burden of clinical documentation is creating, this is the, the, the number one cause of um, burnout of clinicians. A, and about more than 50% of clinicians claim that they are experiencing burnout. And burnout leads to attrition. And that attrition in the United States alone costs about $4 billion per year uh, with the need to train new doctors, with the need with the reduced clinical hours. Um, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big problem. Is it a United States problem? No. It's a global problem. This is a... Uh, it's a problem uh, over there. It's all around the world. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a global issue um, of the clinical staff shortage, and we experience it also uh, in Israel. So this is one example where this type of generative AI can help us achieve um, some relief of that burden. Let's talk about a few examples of uh, technologies that we build today in Microsoft Health and Life Sciences. What we see is that the potential of leveraging AI, the panel was very uh, explicit about it. Leveraging uh, artificial intelligence in healthcare has this huge potential and can it's, it's becoming, the AI is becoming more and more sophisticated as we speak. I, I personally, in all my years of experience, have never seen such a spike in technology. Every day there's something new, even in our products. It's, it's, um, it's fast pacing, it's developing in an enormous rate, uh, and it's becoming more and more sophisticated, and the tasks that AI can achieve become more and more sophisticated. It can do more complex tasks um, in healthcare, we can use it and we already use it, uh, for example, uh, to engage patients, to empower care team, uh, to turn data into clinical insights that would support um, clinicians in their decisions. Um, and we have several products that actually do that. We will soon talk about copilots in healthcare. Copilots are those chat experiences 
And um, this is a product that we actually um, we actually have and uh, in, uh, enable. Um, ambient clinical intelligence is another really good example of a uh, generative AI product uh, that is currently at use by hospital systems in the United States. This is a product. Uh, it's a system that listens in during the encounter and then produces a draft uh, clinical note that the doctor can then edit, uh, modify, and um, create, um, like sign that clinical note once it's it's uh, approved by them. A, and that is actually a big deal because it relieves the doctors from having to write those clinical notes from scratch. Um, text analytics for health that we'll see, we'll also see, can take all this health data and convert it into insights. So extract the essence of the clinical information that exists within um, unstructured text, really, uh, that the, the healthcare system has uh, so much of. So let's start by talking about copilots. I'm sure that many of you want to hear about a uh, copilots. What are copilots? If you've heard the buzzword copilot, copilots are chat agents uh, that are powered by generative um, AI uh, that assist humans in performing tasks, like performing their work, uh, by answering questions or fulfilling requests, uh, those kind of things. We see an explosion of demand uh, in this era. A lot of our customers are coming to us wanting copilots. And there are two types of copilots that people are really interested in. Uh, most, I have to say, healthcare systems that we are engaging with are interested in copilots that are intended for clinical staff, for doctors, for nurses, for radiologists. So this is one category, one family of copilots that we see. Another type of copilots is copilots for patient experiences. I, as a patient, want to get some sort of generative answer a, based on whatever whatever sources to like i have some questions and i need some somebody to give me the answer uh, so uh for that what we've done is we have introduced copilot capabilities so um really a whole healthcare adapted copilot stack into our chat experience product it's a, it's a product by the way that's being developed here in israel um and uh, this is currently in the, this a uh, copilot kind of functionality is currently in preview with uh, about 20 customers even more um and it's building on the generative ai technologies and um healthcare adaptive co copilot stack um what does it have like in very high level it has um it, it's capable of providing generative answers that are grounded on the customer sources, whether it's like um, documents or sources of data that um, the customer provides, whether it's the customer's website. Uh, this is done through a mechanism called the RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, where you can actually force the generative AI model to um, extract the answers from a certain corpus of data, so this is this is one capability that uh, uh, that we've enabled. It's it, it is a, it is a big deal. Um, the product also provides pre-built generative answers that are based on credible sources. And credible sources by credible sources, I mean CDC and FDA and um, those type of um, Medline Plus, uh, etc. Uh, because when I'm asking questions in the healthcare space, I really don't want to get an answer from Reddit or Twitter. Um, and that will happen if I don't limit the range of answers or the range of sources. Um, if I'm asking about guidelines, I want to get it from the credible sources that provide guidelines. So this is also coming from this product. Uh, however, in an industry that is so based on protocols, Sometimes I want a protocol. So this product actually allows you to have to have it side by side. You can have um, generative answers for some of the use cases, for some of the flows, and direct to a protocol, to a medical protocol, if this is suitable for that workflow. 
So this side by side thing, um, it, it's inevitable and uh, it's probably, uh, it, it's, it's critical for an industry that relies so much on protocols. And last but not least, um, safeguards. So what we've done is we've invested in a library of, uh, we've put baked into this tool, a library of dozens of healthcare adapted specialized safeguards that are clinical, say that are tuned clinically um, for a, a chat conversation that is happening in the healthcare space, um, both from compliance, but also from content. I, for example, um, I want to make sure that when I'm getting, first of all, I want to get evidence for any, any response that I'm getting from the generative AI. For every response where I received an evidence, I actually want to make sure that the evidence is relevant and it actually exists and it actually answers the question and it actually supports the answer. Okay. And this is just one example. If I'm getting clinical coding, I want to make sure it exists. And it, it, it could be funny, only that it's not, um, to get answers from ChatGPT in a very high level of confidence, including clinical codes that are completely made up. This phenomenon is called hallucinations, by the way. Um, so there are a lot of phenomena that we are currently dealing with. This is a very nascent area in technology. Um, that it, it's, it's, as, I'm, as I said in the beginning, it's a very interesting era because we're going through a paradigm shift of, uh, with how we are developing software. Everything becomes different. The way we approach systems, the way we measure performance of AI models, the way we uh, look at results and um, test them for accuracy. So this, uh, those safeguards are actually in, intended to, it's almost like, think about it like small models that are making sure that the large language model is um, not deviating from the truth. So keeping it honest in, in a way. Um, I want to show you a couple, couple just a couple of examples uh, to what we do here. It, it, this is again, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, from technology perspective, it's like, a, it's a boom. And um, we are in a state right now, my R&D group is in a state where we're filing like three patents a month. So that's the pace of the advan advancement of technology. And it's um, just, you see problems and then you understand it's a pattern. And then you understand, okay, I need to find some sort of generalized solution to that pattern, uh, just like um, hallucinations as a pattern uh, that we've all started to see. Um, let's look at a couple of examples. Um, so this is, for example, uh, uh, a copilot experience that were ma was made for patients. A patient is asking something about hay fever and they're getting an answer, a generative answer. The generative answer includes a disclaimer, a, a reference to source, and even a link to evidence. I can click and I can see the actual like, portion of evidence from the grounding materials. Um, and this, this evidence has been um, validated. So we know it exists and we know it answers the question. We know it actually is supportive of the answer. So this is just one example. Another example, um, a co-pilot experience for doctors. A doctor is asking something about guidelines. So again, they're getting the relevant guideline. Uh, they're getting a response uh, with, all the supporting, with all the supporting evidence. Those are just a, a couple of examples. So this is the area of co-pilot or chat agents that are capable of discussing um, or providing answers in a generative AI fashion. So I'm actually getting a, a very detailed answer potentially, depending on how detailed I want it. Um, another area where AI, and, and this is by the way, something that uh, if put to use in, in patient engagement use cases or scenarios, um, could, uh, could become a very good solution approach for um, remote care, for example. A another area that I mentioned uh, previously and uh, uh, I just want to touch on is extracting insights from clinical text. So there's a lot of clinical text all over the world um, in the healthcare system. We want to 
um, get into this unstructured text, understand what it talks about, understand what kind of clinical concepts are there, a, what type of um, relationships they have in the context in which they're mentioned, maybe about a family member, maybe about the patient themselves, maybe it's past, maybe it's future, maybe it's an examination, maybe it's a variant of a gene, maybe it's a diagnosis, uh, maybe it's a future examination that has not yet happened and I want to make sure that it's scheduled. For that, we have this tool, Text Analytics for Health, that understands clinical text. This is, by the way, a tool that was not developed with generative AI. It's a smaller model, but it's very, very adapted to healthcare. We've trained it especially for healthcare with healthcare kind of um, data points, entities, concepts, etc. And the good thing to, to say about this is that it's multilingual. It exists in seven languages. It's generally available. Um, one of the languages is Hebrew. Uh, why is that? Because we're here. Um, I'm going to end. I'm going to end uh, with a, a, with an important statement here. Looking at generative AI, it it seems like everybody is so excited about it, and and so were we when we first saw it. It seems like it could be the magic bullet for everything we're trying to solve. It is not. It's not a substitute for human judgment, a, for the human expertise, for the responsibility and the accountability of the humans. Uh, it's a tool, it's only a tool that we have to use wisely and ethically and in a responsible manner. We need to be aware of the risks and the opportunities in generative AI. Um, and we need to be very critical of the sources where answers come from. We need to be very critical to the quality of the generated content. Uh, and we also need to be respectful of the people that are going to be impacted by those kind of technologies and tools. This is why with everything that we build, that my team and I have been, uh, are building, a, we uh, apply our a responsibility AI core principle a, and apply those safeguards a, and quality measures a, in any technology that, that we create. Thank you very much uh, for listening. It is... Um, and a super interesting uh, era that we're at. There's uh, this Chinese uh, saying, Chinese curse, I think. Uh, may you live in interesting times. Definitely interesting times in artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. <laughs>